All right, so if you want to create an online food business, one of the most profitable food businesses to start online is actually snacks. And I'm going to give you 10 steps to create an online snack business that will make you money. I've been in the snack business for over a decade. I have six stores online. I'm pretty sure I can tell you the right direction you need to go. And we're going to dive into those 10 steps right now. All right, so we are back and welcome back to Marketing Food Online. We are YouTube's premier food entrepreneur channel. We're giving you tips and all kinds of videos on how to get food trucks started, how to create a packaged food product, start an e-commerce business selling food and pretty much everything in between. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you get notifications of all of our videos we upload every day. Now, as you know, in my videos, I like to get right to the point and get started. So I'm going to give you the 10 steps to create a snack business that you sell online. Now, I've been in the snack business now for a little bit over a decade. Um, we've been very, very successful. It has taken a lot of work. I am not going to lie to you. This is not something that's easily done in a matter of a month or two, but I could give you the steps you need to get in the right direction, and it's up to you to make it successful. Now, we're going to jump into it. Number one, are you going to make the snack and create your own private labeled product or create your own branded product or are you going to resell snacks okay the question i get quite often is actually about reselling snacks and if there's any type of special licensing or permitting for selling online no but listen to all the steps until i'm completely done and i'm going to give you an explanation as to why can you resell snacks and food that you buy sure you can most businesses actually online do that they don't actually make the product they buy it and resell it walmart buys all of their snacks from a manufacturer and resells it so if you want to resell snacks, yes, you can do that. Now, here's the thing, though. If you're making your own snacks, one of the biggest challenges is are you going to be doing it from home or are you going to be doing it from a commercial business setting? Okay. Number two, which let me, let me kind of take number one and go into number two. If you make or resell, number two is really where are you going to start the business? This is a really crucial point because if you're doing it from home, some states will allow you to resell prepackaged products that you're not making. But if you're going to make a product from home, it's, you're going to actually fall under the cottage food law, and that's going to limit the way that you can sell the product. Now, some states allow you to sell the product online, but it has to actually be delivered within the state. You can't sell it over state lines. So that becomes kind of really tricky because websites are, can be seen by anybody all over the United States, and you can't necessarily regulate that as far as how and not and who's going to get it over the state lines. So it becomes tricky. So... You need to find out where you want to do it from. If you're in a commercial setting, if you go out and rent a small commercial space, you have shelving set up and you're going to buy products, kind of have an inventory and then resell it, that's totally different. Okay, so figure out where you're going to do this from. Number three, how are you packaging it? Now, this is going to be for the people who are making it. If you have a unique product that you want to make and it's a snack item, that's not a problem. You can do that. But you're going to have to check out your packaging. How are you going to package it for shipping? How are you labeling it? Do you have a logo and a look to it? It needs to be branded. Okay, You need to have a look for your product. You've got to think about that. The size of the packaging as well is very important. The nutritional label and the allergen label. So you can actually go on to, and I'll have links, all of these, I'll have some additional resources below this video, by the way, in the description. Everything I'm about to tell you from step one to ten, there's more resources you can check out down in the description. So for, for instance, the nutritional label, you can actually do that yourself. There's a company called Recipal.com. And I'll have a link down below, like I said. You can actually go to Recipal and simply create your own nutritional label based on your recipe. So if you're creating granola, if you have oats and you've got brown sugar and a couple other things, well, you know, nuts and, and dried fruit, you simply plug that into the software and it will create a nutritional label. Now, the cool thing is you could do this yourself, and it's only around 20 bucks or so per label. I mean, of course, there's, there's three other different options that you could choose from based on your budget. But you can literally make your own nutritional label. Okay, so next up would be the allergen warning. Make sure if you're making, again, if this is for people who are making the product, if you're doing that, you can make sure that your allergen label is on there as well. Okay, so packaging, the whole encompasses nutritional label, it encompasses the allergen warning, and everything that would be FDA required needs to be on your packaging, okay? Number four, 
food business insurance. Now, you need to create an LLC and you need to get a, a food business insurance. Now, some states will require other licensing and permits. You need to check your city and county because that actually varies by every city and county has their own legalities, if you will, and requirements. So check into that. But no matter where you are, I've always recommended you need to be uh, an LLC or some type of entity corporation. If it's an S-Corp or C-Corp, you can create whatever entity you want. Most food businesses start off as an LLC. They're simple, they're basic, they're quick and easy. Okay. And by the way, if you don't know how to do that, we also have to get down in the description. There's a link there for a company that you can do it online in less than 15 minutes. Next up is the food business insurance. You need to have an insurance policy for your food business. Now, you probably think, well, Damien, what if I buy snacks and simply resell them? It doesn't matter. You still need to have food business insurance. Because if, for instance, something were to happen to that product, even though you're the seller of it, the responsibility is going to come back to you. So get yourself a in, in, food business insurance policy. Incorporate yourself. Protect yourself from your business. If you don't, the legalities are this. They can come after your house. They can come after your personal property. They can come after your home, everything, your car and everything you own if you don't have yourself as a business. If, you, if it's just yourself and you don't have yourself incorporated and start selling food online that you have bought, at a store and reselling it and somebody gets sick, you're going to have a lot of problems. Okay. So next up, number five, you need to make sure that you get an EIN number. Okay. That's an employer identification number. You need to get a sales tax certificate number from your state. Okay. Now again, every state's slightly different, but you can actually get these online by simply Googling sales tax certificate and the word of the state that you're in. So if you typed in sales tax certificate, Florida, it's going to take you to the website that actually the state of Florida will have set up. You need to get that. Licensing and permits. Make sure you check, as I just briefly mentioned in, in number four, make sure you have the right permits and licensing from the city and county. You need to make sure that when you get a business license that they know that you're operating, for instance, a food business from home. Or if you're going to a retail, uh, re, uh, a commercial setting and you're renting a location, they know that that is what you're doing there. Okay, You're processing food orders and shipping a product online. Okay, so they know that. Number six, build or have someone build your website. Super important, obviously, if you're selling. Now, you can build a store on eBay. Very simple to do that by yourself. That doesn't take a rocket scientist. It's easy to figure out. Building a website is slightly more technical. If you don't want to do it, again, down below in Fiverr, Fiverr actually has some freelancers who can create your website for you. Build it and then turn it over to you. Okay. Now, I recommend you actually build one. I use Weebly and I use Shopify. I use Shopify and Weebly for that purpose because I actually have built out our six websites and two of them are actually on those platforms. So I'm very familiar with it. I recommend you build your own website for your uh, online snack business because if you ever have an issue with it, you're going to understand the backside of the website and know how to fix it instead of having to contact the person that built it for you and ask a bunch of questions. So take the time to build one. You can actually, by the way, use GoDaddy. Uh, WordPress, you can use Wix, Shopify, Weebly. There's a variety of, of different host, uh, website hosts that can actually do this for you and, and allow you to create your own website. I'm sorry. So number seven, shipping. Understand and get familiar with the shipping costs. Okay, It's very crucial because you will lose a ton of your profit and your margin if you don't understand this. So shipping your product, find out every, we use, there's over 40 different packages and containers that, that the post office actually allows you to use to ship. There's a ton from flat rate envelopes to regional A boxes to flat rate boxes. They're all different. So you need to understand your shipping and, and get that down pat because if you don't, your snack business, have your margins will be eaten up if you don't understand it. Okay. Number eight, social media. You need to create an account, a page for your snack business, your online snack business for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. Okay. Now, why do I say LinkedIn? LinkedIn is huge. If you know how to use LinkedIn, you can actually create a profile for your snack business and expose your business to a ton of industry executives in the, in the food and beverage industry, hospitality, gift basket industry. A lot of people who would be loving the types of snacks that you're selling, you need to associate yourself with. So LinkedIn is one. Pinterest. Why, Damien, would I need to be on Pinterest for a snack business? Pinterest, the majority of the traffic going to Pinterest is two things, fashion and food. Food recipes, food ideas, food products. And of course, fashion, which this is not about fashion, but that is the second one of the biggest things on Pinterest. So the one of the two top two biggest things that will get attention on Pinterest is food, things related to food. 
So open a page, start pinning your products. If you're selling your product through your website, you can use the URL and literally create pins from that, okay? Number nine, pricing. Make sure your pricing and your shipping costs. Earlier we talked about shipping, being familiar with that. This kind of blends into that. Number nine is pricing your product and shipping the product pricing. You need to understand whether you're gonna pass it on to your customer or are you going to basically offer free shipping and then take that into the price you're charging. So there's two different ways to do that. One of the things that I gotta tell you really quick to, to really uh, a professional tip I can give you. If you're looking to sell these types of snacks or any snack on uh, online, make sure your price point's around $24 to $29 on a low, on the minimum. Because if you're selling like a $4 bag of, let's say, a snack, one bag for $4, after all the fees that come associated with that transaction and then shipping, customers will not buy a product. Normally, they're not going to spend $4.99 and then pay $8 to have it shipped. So if you bundle them and you bring them together and you sell, let's say, a six-pack of that product, that makes sense. Now your price point is at a point where you're going to make profit. It's going to be worth you processing and shipping it. So keep that in mind. Pricing and shipping. And number 10, this is the biggest one of them all just start. Stop procrastinating, stop questioning things, stop analyzing and researching. There comes a point where all of that nonsense needs to stop and you need to take action. Start from number one and move all the way down the list to number nine, but just start. You're not going to have all the questions, you're not going to have all the answers to your questions. I can tell you that even 12 years in, there's still stuff I'm learning myself, but I've learned a lot along the way, but I, one thing that really made, led us to our success is I started and I just never looked back. Just keep going, moving forward. Learn as much as you can. Watch as many of my videos. If you can't find it, watch someone else's videos. But make sure you learn and be open to that idea. But just start. Okay? So these are the 10 tips that give you a great foundation to get your snack business up and running online. Definitely because I've been doing it for so long. These are things that I've learned over the years. And hopefully they can help you out. So if this was helpful, as always, please do give me a big thumbs up. And I'll see you guys on our next video. Thanks for watching Marketing Food Online. And if you are looking to create your own food truck, Start a home-based food business under the Cottage Food Law. Franchise a food operation. Start a packaged food business. Private label your own food product. Sell on Amazon. Get your own online store or sell food online. Remember to subscribe and check out these videos for more resources. Take care.